Say hi, Lexi. Hi. So we are sitting in the car at the ER of St. Louis Children's Hospital. If you're in our Facebook group, the Lexi's Leukemia Warriors Facebook group, I posted there asking for prayer because we ended up having to take Lexi to the ER. She fell at school today and tweaked her arm or her elbow or something, we don't know. It was last recess and she was playing very hard, running, and she got tangled up in her feet again as she's been, you know, doing. Walking's getting better, running's a different story. And when she fell, her arm twisted and there's just still certain ways that she won't bend it. So the nurse called me and filled me in and they gave her an ice pack. And since it was the end of the day, I was already headed to pick her up anyway. But even now, when my husband got home and we looked at it, there is just certain ways that she will not bend her elbows. And of course, it's her dominant um, side, her right. So we don't know if maybe she tore something or if it's just a really bad bruise and it's nothing. But you can never be too careful with Lex. And of course, the pediatrician was about to close. So they would have referred us to Children's anyway. And obviously, we love Children's. They're the best at handling pediatric issues. Used them many a time when Lexi had her hip dysplasia. So we're no strangers to the ultrasounds and the x-rays and all that. So Lexi said she wanted to film what it's like um, for her in the ER and share a little bit of what happens tonight so we will update you once we get to the er i'm not sure how this will work i guess we're gonna wait in the regular er normally when she was on treatment she was sick enough and usually if you're in the er on treatment your counts are really low and she got to be isolated in a special area but now she gets to be treated like a regular kid so we'll see what happens Tell them bye for now. Bye. Well, we made it to the ER and based on Lexi's history and being cold and flu season right now and her immune system still not the best, they decided that they should just go ahead and put us in isolation like they used to when she was on treatment. So we didn't have to wait out in the general waiting room just to add that extra layer of protection for Lex. So this is the situation we got going on with Lexi's arm. She's got an ice pack and she just will not bend that elbow really. So hopefully we can get to the bottom of things while we're here and see what's going on. So we'll check back in with you once we get to an actual room. Right now we're just waiting to be triaged and in a separate isolation area that's curtained off so we're not around anyone else who might be sick. Right? We don't want to catch what they have. Yeah, we don't want Lexi catching their germs because she has been catching every last little virus that runs through the school as it is. So we will check back in with you in a little bit. We made it to triage and they are going to go get us a room and see what they want to do. So we finished up in triage and we're back in our isolation room. They were kind of tossing up maybe nurses or nursemaid elbow where it popped out of socket, but um, they don't think it's that since nobody tried to catch her when she fell, she's kind of fell on it. So they have the ER doctor come in and look at it and it looks like um, after pressing on the crease of her elbow that they want to go ahead and just get start with an x-ray first and see what they can see because she was definitely complaining of pain and she just really won't bend her elbow. So we're just gonna wait here in our isolation room until they call us back for our x-ray, right? Yeah. So we just got taken back for her x-ray and when they went to put her elbow in one of the positions, she was really um, saying that hurt. So they manipulated it so they could just leave her arm lay there so they could get pictures of her elbow, so. Hopefully we'll know in a few minutes what's going on. Well, we finally made it to a room after sitting in that little isolation area off the triage um, spot in the ER. Um, after getting back from our x-ray, um, they took us here and a nurse practitioner came to see us and let us know that Lexi's elbow is fractured. She fractured her right elbow, which is unfortunately her dominant side. 
Um, so we are now waiting on orthopedics to come down and they told us they're going to splint her elbow because there can be some um, generalized swelling for 24 to 48 hours post any type of fracture and then that's why they want to splint it first and then after the swelling has gone down then she can um, follow up with orthopedics regularly through an outpatient type appointment and they can see about casting it or whatever they want to do um, good news is the NP looked at uh, the x-rays and she felt like it didn't look like it would need any type of surgery, um, but obviously she said orthopedics will be the final call on that. But so hopefully it's nothing where she would need like pins or screws or anything like that. Hopefully it's just a regular run of the mill fracture. Um, she did fall pretty hard on the concrete, so it could be that. Steroids can also make your bones a little weaker um, sometimes. So, and maybe she just, you know, maybe her bones just aren't as strong as what they used to be because she did take a lot of steroids on treatment. So this kiddo here is getting tired. She's been here, laying here watching her phone. Um, she's on ibuprofen right now, but hopefully they're gonna get her a little bit stronger with pain meds because I think her elbow is really bothering her. So um, we will come back once we have seen orthopedics um, and we will show you what Lexi's splint looks like. Well, Lexi ended up getting casted instead of a splint. They said they wanted to get it casted. Orthopedic said they want to cast it right away so that it can be still and start the healing process. And it probably will swell a little bit. They said that's okay. So we have to go down and get another x-ray with the cast on. So that way they can make sure there's no bunching at the elbow. But she has to leave this cast on. And then we follow up the orthopedics in three weeks. And then they said she'll probably have to have the cast for at least a month, so they might be able to give her a new fun color at orthopedics, but down here in the ER, they only have white. They didn't have any other colors. So she's gonna get a white cast for now, and then we'll follow up with orthopedics in three weeks. So we just gotta wait to get our x-ray with the cast on, and if that's all good, we get to go home, right, Lexi? Yes, I wanna go home. I know, Lexi's tired and she wants to go home. So, tell everybody bye for now. Bye. We are back down in x-ray and they're getting the room ready and then they're gonna come get us. So, they said it was a fracture um, on this part up here, leading into her elbow on her humerus. And it was really faint to tell, but they could see some fluid, a black spot on the x-ray around the elbow bend right here that's not supposed to be there. That black spot is a pocket of fluid that's not supposed to be there. So that's how they knew that it had to be fractured. And then when you look really closely at the bone, you could see a little black line, and that's where the fracture was. It was hard to tell on the screen, though. So, yep, so now we just wait. the x-ray they're just waiting for orthopedic to take a look at the x-ray and make sure that the cast is all good there it is and then if the cast is all good they will let us go home it is late it is now almost 10 30 and we still have a 45 minute drive back across the river ahead of us so i don't know that lexi will be going to school tomorrow this poor girl is exhausted they still have to get us a sling, so that way when Lexi's arm gets tired from holding up the cast, then she can put it in a sling so it doesn't bother her so bad. But the orthopedic person who did her cast, he did say that she could try to write and do whatever because it shouldn't affect anything since the fracture was so far up. So hopefully we'll get out of here soon. Um, we are lucky. The x-ray tech who was helping us this time said that we were really lucky she didn't have to go to surgery because most elbow issues end up needing some type of surgery. So we got really lucky. So we will 
check back in with you later. Well, we made out to the car, didn't we, Lexi? Yes. Lexi's got a cast on. They ended up deciding to cast it. I think I said already. And they gave her a splint, which she's not wearing. Um, she wore it out, but obviously she can't wear that in the car seat. It is definitely going to take us a hot minute to get good at getting the cast through the belt on the car seat and then back out again. I'm wondering, because that takes a little bit of maneuvering in the drop-off line, which is time we don't have. So I'm wondering if maybe they will let me park and walk her to the front door or something because I do not want to hold up the drop-off line. This girl says she wants to go to school tomorrow. We'll see. It's pretty late. I guess she can sleep, sleep, sleep on the way home and then we'll see. So, what do you want to tell everybody, Lexi? Subscribe and hit the bell and to make sure that when you see another one, keep it. Alright. Thank you all so much for your love and support. Bye. Just kidding. That's right. Just kidding. So, here we thought we were leaving. We closed out the vlog and we are back at Children's Hospital because what I didn't mention was that we were waiting on orthopedics. I think I mentioned that we were waiting on orthopedics to read the final x-ray with the cast on to give us the all clear to go. Uh, they just want to make sure there was no bunching of the elbow. I think I mentioned that. and. They got tied up in another, they're on call, you know, for overnight, there's like the one person on call, got tied up with another patient, and so was taking a while, and she could tell Lexi was tired, our sweet nurse practitioner, and wanted to get us out of there. So she gave me the option of staying and waiting until he read the x-ray to make sure it was all good, and then we could go, or she said we could just go, because she doubted there was gonna be anything they wanted to do, and then she could just call us if they wanted to do something. Well we were literally getting ready to pass by exit 40 which is the last exit back into st. Louis you got to get on take exit 40 and then go around and it gives you the exit ramp back to 64 again so we literally were like seconds from passing by that she called like a couple minutes before and to tell me and so I was able to like quickly get over into <laughs> the lane for exit 40 so now we get to go back upstairs as it turns out the orthopedic um doctor has decided he'd like to put another couple layers on his, layers on her cast i'm not sure if the x-ray showed something or what but he just decided he wants a couple more layers so ha <sighs> we'll check back in with you upstairs well we made it back up to our same room they left it the same for us hadn't even started cleaning it yet and let triage know so basically I just had to get a new sticker and then we could just um, go right in after going through security so I only brought literally my wallet and my keys with me this time besides my phone because I was like I am not bringing my whole bag of stuff again since hopefully it's just gonna be another couple layers in the cast right Lex yeah, because I don't want to go home. She does. She's tired. She originally thought, kept thinking she wanted to go to school, but we're not going to get home at a decent time. It's already 1140, so it is going to be late when we get home, so she's going to need her rest. So guess I won't be going to work tomorrow either, so this kiddo can stay home and get some rest, and then she'll go back to school on Thursday. Yeah, I But I did have to laugh. It's so funny. So it sounds like looks like they're trying to repaint some of the lines like when you come in like the yellow lines for the arrows for where you should go and where you should park like the bright yellow lines on the ground and it's um they're trying to do the ones as you come in an emergency and i'm sure that's hard on the emergency level you know like where we're parked because that's the first spot you can park after level two is level three emergency 
And so this poor guy is driving around trying to get all these lines and he's got all these cones up. It's like a maze when you drive through trying to avoid all the lines that he's painted. And as we were coming in, the poor guy was getting ready to paint a big thing like right where we needed to drive. So we had to stop and move his thing and drive his little painter machine away. I felt so bad. He was frustrated. It's got to be hard trying to paint stuff when you Oops, we got interrupted by the nurse. So anyway, what I was saying was it's got to be hard um, to do that when you've actively got cars coming in all night. Because technically, they cannot just shut down the parking lot of St. Louis Children's, right? Like, I mean, you have to uh, always be available. So, I mean, there really is no good time to paint the lines that are like right in the middle where people need to drive. So overnight on a random Tuesday into a Wednesday, like overnight, we're talking midnight here, you know, you would think that would be a good time, but this place is always busy. So anyway, we are, uh, that was our nurse practitioner, the same lady from before, who's like attending the floor, I guess. And she said she notified orthopedics and they're on their way back down they finished up with their other patient and I guess they had time to look at our x-ray and somehow it told them they want another layer or two on the cast I guess or something so yeah. we'll get that all taken care of and hopefully get out of here We just made it back from x-ray again. So hopefully this time it is all good. So what ended up happening actually was he looked at the x-ray and noticed a light spot that was an air bubble near the elbow portion of the cast, which is where you don't want it. You want it to be nice and hard and firm right there. So he actually had to take his little cast vibrating saw thing and cut around the pocket that was the air bubble and then remove that and then he packed the air bubble and then wrapped some more around that spot so it's nice and reinforced and then he wanted to get another x-ray to make sure that there was no air bubble this time he said he's never had that happen before and he felt really bad and that it was his fault for making the air bubble and I said it's not a big deal I said we've had so many things that like one in a million things that could happen on chemo that happen, like kidney stones, a rare side effect of chemo. They don't hardly ever see, but Lexi got them, you know what I mean? So I said, please don't beat yourself up. This kind of stuff happens. I'm just glad we caught it so that we could get it fixed right away. And I'm the one that chose to leave of my own volition and sign us out. So it's not a big deal. So we're just gonna wait for the results of the x-ray. And then if that's good, hopefully now we're gonna get out of here. Go oh, yeah. home and go to bed, right? Yeah, I'm tired. Lexi's tired. Well, we made it out to the car for real this time and they said we are for sure good to go. And I'll tell you what, if it hasn't been the strangest night, so I didn't mention, but earlier while we were in the room the first time, um, after the orthopedist had come to visit us, um and do his thing put on the cast he put mine and brian's cell phone numbers in the notes because he said the orthopedics would follow up with us via phone to schedule her appointment for three weeks out she'd probably have to leave the cast on for a month but they'd call us and schedule for three weeks out so he wanted good contact numbers for scheduling that appointment in the notes well 
our nurse practitioner was trying to get a hold of him to see when he would make his way down and she called my phone because she saw that number in the notes thinking that was the number for orthopedics. And I had to explain to her, no, that was my phone number and the other one is my husband's phone number. So then we were walking out to the parking garage just now and I looked down at my phone and it's a 314 number calling me, which I know is children's. And I answer it thinking, oh no, don't tell me he found something else because he looked at the x-ray this time and gave us permission to leave. So what is it now? And they're looking for our orthopedic doctor. Apparently... Someone else saw my phone number in the notes and they decided to call me and I was like, no, this is Jenna Garner. And they go, oh, are you a doctor with orthopedics? No, I'm the mother of Alexia Garner who was just seen by orthopedics and the other phone number in the notes is my husband's number. Oh, I'm so sorry. We all have to tell him not to do that. That uh, That's very confusing to put that there. And I said, well, he did that because he they need to call us. Oh, man, it's late at night. It is now 1230, so we need to get home. I think I'm a little not making any sense anymore, am I, Lexi? Yeah, you don't make any sense. Lexi really wanted to go to school, but it's just not going to happen. It is too late. We still have to get home, get her into bed. So, all right, you want to sign off the video again? Yeah. So, click the like button and, and don't forget to hit the bell. And hit subscribe, right? Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody. We love you. Bye. For real, bye. <laughs> For real, bye. Uh -huh.